The Merry Beggars and Relevant Radio present Christmas Live. A Christmas radio variety show performed live at Relevant Radio's headquarters in Lincolnshire, Illinois. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay. Welcome to Relevant Radio's first ever Christmas Live. We're so, so excited to have you. Uh, my name is Peter Atkinson. I'll be your host for this evening, and I want to thank all the great musicians to start out with. That was Julian Hagen on guitar, Brandon uh, Reisdorf on violin, and Sarah Jenkins on piano. And on behalf of the cast and crew of the Merry Beggars, I want to welcome to Relevant Radio's first annual Christmas Live, performed live in the Relevant Radio's headquarters, still under construction here in Lincolnshire, Illinois. Now, tonight should be interesting. This is the first time that we performed live on stage, first time we performed radio scripts in front of a live audience. So, guinea pigs, hello. Uh, first time that we'll be performing with live sound effects, first time we're performing with a live video crew. What could go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? Wrong. However, in case uh, air pressure cabin is lost, an oxygen mask will drop uh, on top of you. Remember to put on your own mask first before helping the person next to you, unless the person next to you is Father Rocky, in which case probably help him first and then yourself. Uh, we got a great show for you tonight. We have A Trip to Space, A Spine Tingling Mystery, three musical guests. We've got Julian Hagen with music from the Washington Island, the Northridge Boys Choir. We have here a lot of people to help do one thing, which is to celebrate Christmas. The coming of God Almighty as a wee babe in a manger in Bethlehem. It's a story of God's unceasing love and mercy. And to help us celebrate that story, are the Irving sisters with the sound straight out of the golden age of radio. So get your family, grab your hot cocoa, gather around the fire, tune up your old transistor radio, call your ham radio friends together, tune up that old AM radio dial, kick up the generator, tune in your FM radio, then turn it from NPR, and join us for Relevant Radio's Christmas Live. Irving sisters, take it away. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, you stand in verdant beauty. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, you stand in verdant beauty. Your boughs are green in summer's glow and do not fade in winter's snow. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, you stand in verdant beauty. You stand in verdant beauty. Your boughs are green in summer's glow and do not fade in winter's snow. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. You stand in verdant beauty. You stand in verdant beauty. Thank you to the Irving sisters. Weren't they great? You know, every day this Christmas season, mainstream news channels and cable shows will shout about this scandal or that, which is a shame because they miss the true meaning of Christmas. They miss the miracle of our faith that God came down and became man to redeem us. But we should take heart. Uh, it's always been this way. The cable morning news shows back in Jerusalem 3 AD were the exact same as ours today.
Shalom, salve, and what's up, Judea? Welcome back to another edition of Good Morning Jerusalem. I'm Larry Bartlett. And I'm Candace McCooley. And today is December 25th in the year 753 since the founding of Rome, the year 27 of the reign of Caesar Augustus, and the year 597 since the Babylonian exile. That's a mouthful. It always is, Larry. Do you ever something? Do you ever wish something big would happen and we just count the years from that? Sure would make it easier to fit the date on a postcard. You're so right, Candace. It'd have to be something of cosmic significance, like the most important event in human history. You mean Mark Antony's first date with Cleopatra? Ha! <laughs> Good one. No, I was thinking something more like, I don't know, the coming of the Messiah? That certainly would be a big deal. Unfortunately, that's not one of our stories today. Instead, we've got updates on that unusually bright star, three mysterious visitors from the east, and a shepherd who says he received a visit from another world. Wow, another world? That's right, Larry, but first, the traffic report. Chad? Thanks, Candace. I'm here on the southbound Sahara, and boy, is it busy. People all over Judea are traveling back to their ancestral hometowns for the census. We've got several slow-moving camel trains this morning. Seems a dehydrated camel has blocked the left-bound lane. <laughs> Practically nose-to-tail traffic out here, just humps as far as the eye can see. That sounds rough, Chad. Sounds furry to me. Talk about hump day, am I right, Chad? Thanks, Larry. <laughs> it is rough, Candace. Now, we did expect increased traffic on account of the census, but nothing like this. Is there any relief coming? Well, rumor has it that our good King Herod is sending chariots to pick up women and children and shuttle them to the front of the crowd. In fact, here come some chariots now. Classic Herod, always so thoughtful. He really is. You know, he just doesn't get enough credit. And he's so good with the kids. Any accidents to watch out for, Chad? Yes, Larry, as a matter of fact, exit 237 to Jericho is backed up due to an armed robbery. Word is a priest and a Levite managed to get through before traffic was blocked by a Samaritan stopping to help. Sounds like it'd be best to tie up your dromedary and work from home today. Thanks, Chad. You got it, Candace. You know, a census is a great time to see family and friends from out of town. But this year, Bethlehem, that little town in the middle of nowhere, is playing host to some visitors of a more exotic variety. Amanda Brinkley is on the ground with a trio of foreigners who call themselves Meiji. Maggie. McGee. <clears throat> Am I saying that right? What is that? Some kind of fitness guru? <laughs> Help us out, Amanda. Thanks, guys. Yes, I'm here with three travelers from the East who call themselves Magi. Do I have that right? Yes, that's right. Could you tell our audience, what exactly does a Magi do? Are you kings? Well, not exactly. You know, we prefer to be called wise men. Bearing gifts, we traverse afar. Field and hey, fountain, guys, moor hey, guys. and mountain. Hey, guys, don't, don't do the song. On okay. the star. Oh. Come on, guys. Oh, the star. So that's what brings you to Bethlehem? Uh, yes, uh, somewhere around here a virgin, she gave birth to a baby who's destined to be king. So, you know, uh, we bring gifts. Oh, that's so thoughtful. Young mothers always appreciate the help. Could I ask, what gift did you bring, sir? Frankincense. Frankincense? Huh. Kind of outside the box for a baby shower, but okay. What about you, sir? Myrrh. It's bitter perfume. Breeds a life of gathering gloom. Ah, Come gathering on, gloom. Have you guys ever met a young mother? Did anyone bring diapers? Sir, how about you? Well, I brought gold. The baby's a king, after all, so... Well, there you have it, Larry. Magi from the East. They may be wise, but don't let them pick out gifts for a baby shower. <laughs> can, we, can we do the song now? Back to you, Larry. Now, those are words of wisdom, aren't they, Candace? They sure are, Larry. You know, I don't think we've had such an eventful morning show in weeks. A census? Three fitness instructors from the Far East? A star hovering directly over town? Which makes this the perfect time for one of our favorite segments. That's right, it's time for another episode of Obadiah's Believe It or Not, It's True! 
Obadiah. That's me. What news of the weird and wonderful do you have for us today? Well, Candace, I'm here in a small hill in Bethlehem, and believe it or not, these shepherds say they've been visited from another world. That's hard to believe, Obadiah. Well, believe it or not, it's true. <laughs> I love it when he says that. I have here one of the shepherds, a Benjamin, who claims to have been visited by this presence. Uh, ben, uh, Ben, this way, please. Yes, right in front of the camera. Yes. Uh, now, Ben. Tell us what you saw. Uh, well, there was a great chorus of them telling us that a savior was born this day, uh, right here in Bethlehem. In Bethlehem. They they chose Bethlehem, not Alexandria or Rome. That's what they said. Now that is one tall tale. Sounds like this shepherd has gone bananas. I thought we agreed you'd stop the puns, Larry. Well, this story is certainly unheard of. Am I right, Larry? Obadiah, no puns. Okay, okay Candace. Candace. Well, I'm not sure I believe it, Obadiah. You know, Larry, me neither. Hard to tell what's true these days. Look, if you don't believe me, you can just come with us. We're going to the manger where the king is. It's it's just on the next street. A king in a manger? That sounds a little rich to me. I don't know if you can turn down that invitation, Obadiah. Anything for our listeners. Lead the way, Ben. Well, while you're walking over, we can just mention that our show this morning is sponsored by Mount Vesuvius Vacations in Pompeii. Want to get away with the family? Looking for a hot summer location? Well, Vesuvius Vacations Incorporated is hosting an explosive new deal of buy one, get one free on any room in the city of Pompeii. Discover the breakout Italian destination. Make memories that will outlast the centuries. Mount Vesuvius in Pompeii. And now back to Obadiah, who should be in the manger by now. Obadiah? Obadiah, are you there? We seem to have lost Obadiah, but we'll be back tomorrow with another thrilling news segment. On tomorrow's show, we'll have a math prodigy who's decided to go into, of all things, tax law. His name is Matthew, and he's sure to make a splash. See you tomorrow, Larry. Catch you on the flip side, Candace. Well, sometimes the cable news show misses what's important, but that doesn't mean we have to. And one of the things we're trying to do tonight is to remember what's actually important. And we have a group here that's going to help us remember what's important, the Northridge Preparatory Youth Choir. They will be singing God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. And that's right, your programs also have lyrics to God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. So when they get on stage, it's up to you to help them sing along.
to the Northridge Preparatory Choir. And if you missed it, that was your only chance you'll probably ever get in your life to be directed by the choir master, John McFarlane, assistant principal violin at Lyric Chicago Opera. So those of you who did sing along, you can now place that on your resume. Now, growing up, I listened to a lot of old-time radio, uh, and so when we were putting together this show, there was one show that we, we had to involve. Uh, it's a little show called Five Minute Mystery. And uh, to explain the concept of the show, you have to know it's five minutes, um, and it's a mystery. Uh, and so you're supposed to solve the mystery in five minutes. So not too much to explain. Um, so thank you to the Northridge Preparatory Choir, and now Five Minute Mystery. It's another five-minute mystery. The mystery show where you try to solve the mystery. Keep your ears sharp and see if you can spot the clues. We find ourselves at Great Aunt Mildred's Grand Mansion, where her niece Angeline, her caretaker, is in conversation with her neighbor. And that's what I couldn't understand, you see. I don't want to, but the wasps are such a nuisance. I uh, see, I must be going. Uh, I have a few errands left in town. Hello, Angeline. Oh, hello, Brandon. I didn't see you there. I was just chatting with Mr. Compton, our new neighbor. I'm afraid I've kept him talking for two hours about wasps. Uh, I must be going. Oh, oh, goodbye. Brandon, the long-lost scientific explorer returns. How are your wild tarantulas, brother? It's been ages since I've seen you. Good, thanks. The tarantulas are fine. They say... Hello. Everything in the Amazon either wants to eat you or kill you. How are your wasps? I think I've got most of them. But Angeline, is Great Aunt Mildred really going to cut us out of a will? She is, I'm afraid. <gasps> oh, look! Nero has just arrived. The siblings are back together again. Hello, Angeline. Hello, Brandon. Uh, uh, Brandon, go help Nero with his bags. Oh, no, 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 I'm fine. Just, uh, there. Whew. It's so good to see you again, Brandon. Angeline. Is it true? Are we being cut out of the will? Yes, yes. No use talking about it. Nero, go inside and set out the sherry in the library. Brandon, bring in Nero's trunks and put them in the parlor. Aunt Mildred will want dinner any minute now, and I haven't been in the house for hours. Mr. Conkton kept me talking outside about wasps. How could Aunt Mildred manage without you, Angeline? She couldn't. Now move along, you two. Dinner awaits. Just put the trunk down there, Brandon. How is the sherry coming along, Nero? Just fine. It's just like Aunt Mildred to throw a party when she's writing us all out of her will. Has she signed the will yet? You'll have to ask her, Brandon. I ought to call her downstairs. Aunt Mildred! Auntie! Everyone's waiting. Coming, dear. Just finishing my Christmas cards. Have you seen my stamps? I left the stamps on the desk for you, Auntie. She's coming. It's true, then. Great Aunt Mildew is going to cut us out of her will. <laughs> Better than that. It's not going to that local charity. Uh, what was it called again, Angeline? Uh, kittens in Distress, I believe. Oh, that's <laughs> right. She must never have gotten over Uncle Roderick's death. Um, th he was always so good with cats. Does she still have Mr. Whiskers about? <coughs> oh, yes. <laughs> There he is. Without our inheritance, I have no idea how I'm going to fund my medical practice. We're still mired in debt. <laughs> and I've committed to three more Amazonian research expeditions. Uh, how would you like to tell a native tribe that we can't pay our bills? Without Aunt Mildred's financing, we're doomed. Uh, shush, you two. She's coming down. Oh, nephew Brander and nephew Nero. What a delight to see you again. Mwah. Uh, Great Aunt Mildred. Mildred! A toast. We need a toast to your successes. You two have been telling me for years how successful you are, so now you don't need me and my silly money any longer. No, the kittens are the truly needy ones here. We need a toast to your success and to the kittens in distress. Oh, that rhymes. I must write that down. Uh, Nero, you pour the sherry. Here you are, and you, and you, and me. A toast. Uh, to the kittens. Uh, huzzah. 
Aunt Mildred, you don't look so well. Aunt Mildred! I'm fine. I just... something... Aunt Mildred! Uh, Miro, come here quick! She... she's dead! She's dead? Quick, call a doctor! I am a doctor! The sherry! The sherry has been poisoned! Then call the inspector! Thank you for coming so quickly, Inspector. Of course. <laughs> Run me through the, the circumstances once more. Aunt Mildred called us all together for a last Christmas party before she cut us out of her will. And now she's died of poisoned sherry. With her tongue being swollen and the suddenness of her death, she could only have been poisoned within the last hour. In the last hour? In the last hour! In the last hour? No one was near her. Nero! You, you poured the sherry. You must have poisoned it. We all drank the sherry. It wasn't poisoned. But you, you poisoned her with one of your spiders from the Amazon. I wasn't near her before she came downstairs. Angeline was with her all day. She did it. Calm, everyone. Calm now. Where have you all been for the past hour? We'll begin with you, Angeline. I wasn't near her all afternoon. I was outside talking with Mr. Conkton for hours. Brandon and Nero will swear to it. It's true. That's right. Uh, she was taking care of the wasps when I pulled up. And you, Brandon? Uh, I carried in Nero's trunks and stayed with Nero and Angeline. You carried in the trunks, you say. And you, Nero? I came in and poured the sherry for everyone. What was Great Aunt Mildred doing during this time? She was working on her Christmas cards. She called down for her stamps, I remember. None of us saw her before she came down and died. That does it? There's only one person who could have been the murderer, and I know who it is. Do you know who killed Great Aunt Mildred at the Christmas party? Are you as clever as the inspector? Well, after this next delicious song from the smash hit Irving Sisters, we'll return for part two and the solution to murder for Christmas. Sisters, up on the housetop, reindeer paws. Out jumps good old Santa Claus. Down through the chimney with lots of toys, all for the little ones' Christmas joys. Ho ho ho! Who wouldn't go? Ho ho ho! Who wouldn't go? Up on the housetop, click click click. Down through the chimney with old Saint Nick. Don't forget me, Santa. First comes the stocking of little Nell. Oh dear Santa, fill it well. Give her a dolly that laughs and cries. One that will open and shut her eyes. Ho, 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 who wouldn't go? Ho, 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 who wouldn't go? Up on the housetop, click, click, click. Down through the chimney with old Saint Nick. Well, would you look at that? Look in the stocking of little Bill. Oh, just see that glorious fill. Here is a hammer and lots of tacks. Whistle and a ball and a set of jacks. Ho, 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 who wouldn't go? Ho, 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 who wouldn't go? Up on the housetop, clickety, clickety, click. Down through the chimney with old Saint Nick. Doesn't that song remind you of murder? And now, back to part two and the solution to murder for Christmas. Inspector, none of us went near Aunt Mildred. You didn't have to, Angeline. Are you implying that Angeline had something to do with Aunt Mildred's death? What were you doing outside in the garden, Angeline, before you talked to Mr. Conkton? 
You were killing the wasp nests, weren't you? And what do people normally use to kill wasps? Everyone uses cyanide spray, don't they? But I was never near Aunt Mildred. How could I have poisoned her? What was Aunt Mildred doing before she came down? She was sending out Christmas cards. She called down asking Angeline where the stamps were. Exactly. Angeline put cyanide poison on the stamps, which Great Aunt Mildred then licked off. Aunt Mildred was already doomed to die by the time she came downstairs. That's why her tongue was swollen from the stamps. Angeline, how could you? She cut us all out of her will. After years of taking care of her, I was going to lose my inheritance to kittens. Kittens! She was going to ruin us all! You're coming down to the station, Angeline. It was clever to use stamps to poison Aunt Mildred, but you pushed the envelope too far. This Christmas, you're licked. Did you solve the mystery? Of Great Aunt Mildred's death? Were you more clever than the inspector? You can always try again in the next installment of Five Minute Mysteries, which may not be until next Christmas. You have plenty of time to practice. Until next time, this has been another Five Minute Mystery. And next up, we have a lovely group uh, from Washington Island. Uh, some of you know that place, I, I know. Um, we originated this idea of doing a live show when we saw a performance in a place called the Red Barn on Washington Island. And Julian Hagen and his crew uh, will come out and perform some of the songs uh, that are from that island uh, and delight us all. Do that again. Are you listening? Get up, get up, get up, it's Christmas. Celebrate it to Bethlehem. Get up, get up, get up, it's Christmas. Born is the Savior of men. Shepherds watch their sheep that night. Angel appeared and gave an awful fright. He said, Easy now, don't be afraid. I bring you good news to where the Savior is led. So get up, get up, get up, it's Christmas. Celebrate it to Bethlehem. Get up, get up, get up, it's Christmas. Born is the Savior of men. Wise men looked up in the sky What did they see? Something so bright it almost blinded their eyes What could it be? It was predicted in the good book Follow that star and now they look So get up, get up, get up It's Christmas Celebrate it to Bethlehem Get up, get up, get up, it's Christmas. Born is the Savior of men. Now Joseph said, Mary, please be my wife. Ooh, he loved her so. Mary said, Joe, in my belly there's life. Ooh. Uh oh, she said, I'm having a baby, but he's not your son. But Joe said, God told me you're the one. So get up, get up, get up, it's Christmas, celebrate it to Bethlehem. Get up, get up, get up, it's Christmas, born is the Savior of men. Oh yeah. Thousand years have come and gone. 
that's history. The love of Jesus is still going strong. Out to you and me, he said, do and do others as you'd have done to yourself. Yes, and something else. Get up, get up, get up, it's Christmas. Celebrate it to Bethlehem. Get up, get up, get up, it's Christmas. Born is the Savior of men. Get up, get up, get up, it's Christmas. Celebrate it, who you gotta celebrate it. Get up, get up, get up, it's Christmas. Born is the Savior of men. One more. Get up, get up, get up, it's Christmas. Celebrate it to Bethlehem. You better get up and celebrate it. Get up, get up, it's Christmas. Born is the Savior of men. Thank you so much. Now, Julian, for those who don't know, um, how would you describe Washington Island, the, the place you originate? Um, if you've not been there, it is uh, 700 people live year-round on the island. It's uh, a real chill place. Not The Door County itself has become way more busy, like in Fish Creek, but the island is still really built on conversations and music and spending time alone or with each other. So hope you'll come up. And how many generations of your family have been on Washington I'm Island? I'm the fourth generation. So. Fourth generation. So yeah. last two years ago when we sang the Red Barn, there were four generations singing yes. together. Which is amazing. It was a pile of humanity that night. <laughs> I have uh, two sisters, six nieces and nephews, and 29 little kids from all that stuff. Plus, now she's my stepdaughter has one, and my other stepdaughter has four, so that makes 33, I guess, uh, in this whole pile. Lots and lots of musicians. And everybody's fighting for the microphone. <laughs> yeah. So. And I, I know you have another song. So what is this next song that you're performing? Uh, this, is, um, this is a secret just within this room here, and it's for you and you. Uh, the night before Christmas, all the ornaments come alive. Not everybody knows this. And they have a dance. It's called the Ornaments Dance. And uh, the chorus is very, it doesn't have words. So it's singable, of course. So we're going to do the chorus first, and hopefully you'll join in because it comes up a bunch of times. And that's why we've taken the precaution of putting our ornaments in these yeah. pages I'll start dancing so that to they don't otherwise. come yeah. alive. So this will be how the chorus goes. I'll do it kind of slowish, and then we'll pick it up a little. <clears throat> don't be afraid. la, 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 la. La 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 Can you help me out now? That's all there is to it. La 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 Now you have a smile already. This is good. What do we do now? How do we start this? Go ahead. Magic happens at Christmas each year, ornaments alive as the ornaments cheer. They come to life both far and near at the ornament dance. The music box plays, they form a line, mistletoe taps to keep the time. Tree lights blink and tinsel shines at the ornament dance. La 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 Gingerbread man, a button missing, crooked eye, no lips for kissing, but he's swinging and he's twisting at the ornament dance. One leg shorter than his other, but to him that's not a bother, he'll dance one circle then another at the ornament dance. La 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 they grab Rudolph by the nose, dozy do until it glows. Watch out or you'll step on your toes at the ornament dance. The angel rests at the top of the tree. She's danced so hard she can hardly breathe. Then she spreads her wings and floats so free at the ornament dance. La 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 la
It should come as no surprise Santa's here with his laughing eyes For a break before his sleigh ride At the ornament dance Maybe you think he's way too old But he's got the moves, got the soul All while doing his belly roll At the ornament dance La 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 Charlie Bradtree branches few, so few you can see right through To over where they're dancing to at the ornament dance Then the ornaments stop and say a prayer Giving thanks that they're all here Then one last jig until next year At the ornament dance La 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 Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you to Julian and friends. Now we've all had uh, experiences traveling for Christmas, traveling for the holidays, um, and sometimes they're good, filled with anticipation. Sometimes we get stuck in airports and trains and automobiles and other modes of transportation. Um, so this next section, uh, this next script, this next radio play uh, is sort of an homage to our experiences of traveling home for Christmas. Gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Flight 1944 to Los Angeles has been cancelled due to the incoming snowstorm. Passengers report to the ticketing counter. At the okay, door. final airport check. Presents? Wrapped and in our checked baggage. Unread Christmas cards. Here, alphabetized by last name. My Christmas cookies? In the carry-on like you asked. And how is the four-part harmony on All Holy Night coming? Slowly? Lisa, you know how important caroling is to me. And how important decorating the tree is and watching a Christmas story and sleigh riding okay, up the Okay, Scrooge. Nephew. I just want our first Christmas together to be perfect. Is that too much to ask? Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? We have just been informed that due to the snowstorm, all flights have been grounded until further noticed. What? For your safety, the roads have also been closed and the doors of the airport locked. No one will be allowed in or out until the snow plows free us. No more food, no more supplies. We are trapped. May God have mercy on us all. In the meantime, please enjoy this playlist of your favorite holiday tunes. The week is December 25th, a busy time for travel. The modern miracle of flight is made a misery by the swarms of sightseers striving to sail home. Hank and Lisa Sims join the throng, unaware that they are about to embark on a voyage, but not one of aviation. We're about to spend Christmas with Hank and Lisa Sims as they take a journey of the soul deep into the belly of the Yuletide Zone. Oh, boy. You picked a winter spot here, didn't you? Pardon? Oh, you got an outlet and a handicap seat with an arm without an armrest? <laughs> Valuable real estate. Would you mind if I charge my phone for just a bit? I'm Gary from Sheboygan. Of course. I'm Hank. Not from Sheboygan. My, my wife, Lisa, is in line for the peanuts the airlines are hanging, handing out. Uh, happy to share with a fellow Christmas pilgrim. You trying to get home? Uh, sure am. Your first time snowed in? Uh, yes. Well, settle in. Folks are hopeful still, and that's good. Still think they'll make it home for Christmas supper. It won't be long, though, before the airlines run out of peanuts. And then the real madness begins. 
<laughs> oh yeah, then things will get ugly. You'll never believe. <laughs> oh, hello. Uh, Lisa, this is Gary from Sheboygan. Just borrowing your outlet. <laughs> well, guess what? They ran out of snack packs two people before me. They ran out of peanuts? <laughs> You'll never believe it. The two ladies in front of me fought over the last snack pack. A fist fight. Over peanuts. Well, I should get going. Find a place to hunker down, don't you know, before the gangs start to emerge. A Merry Christmas to ya! Try as Hank Sims may to keep his thoughts on sugar plums and sherry. A sense of foreboding settles into the pit of his stomach. As time passes, the knot in his stomach doesn't. Ladies and gentlemen, the toilets by Terminal C have flooded and will not be repaired until the snowstorm lifts. Thank you and have a happy holiday. Excuse me, son. Could I use your outlet? Sorry, I'm using it right now. But you're just watching movies on your phone. Christmas movies? It's a family tradition to watch a movie a night. I've already missed A Muppet Christmas Carol and Die Hard. Now, if you don't mind, I'm in the middle of Hello, Mr. Humbug, so I really... Oh, be- we'll see what the kingpin has to say about this. The who? Unbelievable! What's the matter? Did you find the bathroom? The line stretches all the way back to security, but when I finally get to the front, I find out there's no more toilet paper. So it begins. No! Gary! How long have you been there? One of the custodians stole all of the toilet paper. He's hoarding it and selling it for $90 a sheet. Oh, I've heard mutterings of him. He's made a throne of toilet paper, sits atop it, calls himself the kingpin of Terminal C. He does. I hear he's willing to barter, though, if you have Christmas cookies. Cookies? Hank, didn't you bring your mother's cookies? No, no. No, no, those are my Christmas cookies. But Hank... My mother has made those for me every year since I was born. I am not trading them for toilet paper. I have to go to the bathroom. Well, what what if we practice your part for Oh Holy Night? Hank... (laughs) That will take your mind off of it. Oh, holy night, the dawn is barely creeping. Hank! I I, I, I can't do it, okay? Your Christmas without those cookies, Lisa, you're robbing me of the one thing that makes Christmas special. Give me the cookies. Now! Mm -hmm. Thank you. They sure did look like good cookies, though, didn't they? Thanks, Gary. Look, I'm just going to put in my earbuds and... Uh... That's him right over there! Oh, uh-oh. What? Hello, governor. There's a mighty nice spot you got there. Oh, we claimed this spot right away. Oh, I... you claimed it, did you? And have you paid your property taxes? Property taxes? What? Are we in Illinois now? <laughs> You're in Terminal C. That's the Kingpin's territory. Uh, well, I... So I... whether or not you claim this spot, the kingpin is now relieving you of it. Okay, let me just unplug my phone. Oh, and... you can leave the phone. I've missed me family's tradition of watching home alone, and I'm keen to catch up. You can't do this. <laughs> it's not me. It's the kingpin. But I. You I... have a happy holiday, dearie. <laughs> Time passes as Hank and Lisa try to survive their Christmas travel in the airport. Days, weeks pass. Or has it just been hours? With the sun still falling, power gone, and the sunlight scarce, it's hard to keep your bearings in the Yuletide Zone. We come to the final chapter of Hank and Lisa's Odyssey, finding Lisa huddled around a fire in a Salvation Army bucket, desperately trying to stay warm. Lisa, I've got a Christmas Eve surprise. Come on, this way. Uh, Hank, I I can't leave. We're supposed to be guarding the barricade. Power has been out for days. No one will notice if you Look alive, minions! Shh! She's coming! Hide! Stand with the pride of the one who belongs to the kingpin of Terminal C. All hail the kingpin! Our informants on the other barricade have indicated that the Canadians and their ilk will attack tonight! Down with the Canadians! 
Quick, now's our chance, Lisa. Come on. Oh! Uh, uh, Gary! You two got here fast. Darn good running, both of you. You gotta stop startling us like that. <laughs> oh, sorry, it's just second nature. What's in here? Ta-da! We got you hot toddies and pigs in a blanket. The traditional Sims family Christmas Eve snack. What? Uh, how did you... Gary found it for us. A couple of guys in the resistance used to run the security check. They had all sorts of stuff confiscated. This is amazing. Well, any whoozle, I gotta get back. We're having burgers in the hideout. Wait a minute. I thought the Canadians got the last meat when they raided the McDonald's. Oh, <laughs> there are plenty of ways to find meat, Lisa, if you know where the airport keeps the pets. <laughs> Enjoy! You want some pigs in a blanket? Not really. Me neither. What's wrong? I don't know. I, I just wanted our first Christmas together to be special. Hank, it is special. We're together, aren't we? 2,000 years ago, God was made man, and we get to celebrate that together. No matter where we are. How could Christmas get any more special than that? We could have toilet paper. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. You learned the alto part. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. A voice, that's someone on the other barricade. Long lay the world in sin and error pining. There's they are! That's them singing! The traitors! Traitors? They're singing in secret codes with the enemy across no man's land. Secret codes? That's a Christmas carol. We must prepare for battle. What? No! Our time for glory is upon us. We go to war for the kingpin. Oh! Oh! oh. It's so bright. What is this devilry? Since when do the lights work? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We have just been given clearance to reopen the airport. If you would kindly report to your original gates, flights will begin boarding momentarily. <clears throat> Could I have my phone back? Huh? Oh, your phone? Oh, of course. Uh, pardon me. What was our gate, honey? Uh, uh, 42, I believe. Oh, mine too. Mind if I walk over with you? I just need to find my cat first. He got lost in a commotion earlier. Won't take a minute. Mr. Whiskers? Here, kitty. Here, kitty. Kitty, kitty, Mr. Whiskers. Their journey complete, Hank and Lisa emerge, chastened and changed by their journey. Who will believe their story? Probably it's a figment of their imagination. However, if power goes out in the airport, or a slippery customer from the Midwest seems a bit too friendly. You best stay away from the pigs in a blanket before you're pulled into the Yuletide Zone. And next up we have uh, Michaela Elise Fox, who will be performing What Child Is This? Our very own producer. Um, so Michaela Elise Fox.
As we know, Christmas is celebrated in different ways all over the world. Various cultures have different celebrations, and the last frontier space is still figuring out how it's going to celebrate Christmas. Um, there are some fragile traditions that are starting to emerge, but it's really slowly starting to come into existence. Columbia Stace. Columbia Space Station, this is Houston. Come in, Columbia. Uh, copy, Houston. This is Dr. Weber on the Columbia. Dr. Weber, we're seeing an unusual power surge coming from the space station. Can you confirm that? Oh, let me check. Oh, and Merry Christmas Eve, Dr. Weber. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see it. It's coming from the exterior power line. Let me get a visual out the window here. Oh, you can't be serious. What? What is it? Oh, uh, n nothing. Just a uh, routine, um... Randy! Is everything all right, Dr. Weber? Absolutely peachy. Just give me one moment to investigate, and I'll call you right back. Randy, get in here! Ho, 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 ho! What's this I hear? Someone streaming on Christmas Eve? What are you wearing? <laughs> oh, surely you recognize Kris Kringle's famous don't, friend! Don't, don't do the voice. You could keep the hat and the suit, but no Santa voice. Oh, can I keep the beard? Ugh. <laughs> Come on, I mean, you've just been so uptight lately. So grumpy, I thought that this would, like, lighten your mood, you know? Raise your spirits. If it would make you feel any better, you can sit on my lap. Randy. <laughs> what? When you went out to check the docking port, yeah. did you happen to uh, accidentally wrap the station in Christmas lights? You noticed! Yeah, <laughs> and you know who else noticed? Houston! Well, you know, nothing gives you that Christmas spirit and that Christmas cheer like the sight of sparkling lights, Carl. You and I are the only people on this space station, and we're orbiting 400 kilometers above Earth. Who's going to see them? Well, we're right above Beijing. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, Carl. You're, like, really stressed, man. Like, every time you're feeling stressed, out come the peanut M&Ms. I just, I just need one thing that I actually enjoy. So, so what's stressing you out this time? Randy, get back out there and unplug those lights. What, now? Yes, and now. Oh, but no, it's, it's like five minutes till midnight. It's like five minutes till, till Christmas, Carl. Can't we just, can I just do it tomorrow? Can we leave it up for one more night? You'll put them away again and never bring them out ever again? I promise. And no more Christmas carols? No, not even jingle bells? And not a single other Christmas decoration goes up for the rest of our deployment. Other than the ones that I've already put up, yes, I promise. What was that? Oh, shoot, I ruined it. I, huh. Randy! No, 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 no. Hey, listen, I, I, why don't you um take a little gander over to the crew cabin, okay? If you filled our... Room with Christmas decorations. No, 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 no. It was, it was very tasteful. I kept it very tasteful, Carl. 
A Christmas tree? <laughs> Why did you bring a Christmas tree onto a space station? Because well, you said I couldn't bring the advent wreath. Carl. That's because you can't light candles in a space station, Randy! Well, not to worry! Calm down! There's nary a candle on that tree. And that's not all. Look what's under the tree. The, um, un... Wait, where is it? Oh! Right there! Do you see it? Right there! You mean the 50 <laughs> ornaments that are now floating in our room? I, it, it turns out it's not so easy to put ornaments on a Christmas tree in zero gravity, but no, that's not what I'm talking about. Look, right, right up against the ceiling, right there. See it floating? Do you see it? Is that a present, Randy? Oh, yeah. I told you not to give me a present! It's not from me, it's from your secret Santa. My what? Your secret Santa. Randy. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll have to open it to find out who had you. Randy. <laughs> Randy. Oh. Carl, your, your M&M packet looks a little empty. Yes, I can see that. Now, where did I put the rest of them? Where, where did I put those M&Ms? Uh, Carl, actually, I think that was your last packet. What? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. no, 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 no. That That's it. impossible. I brought enough to last the entire deployment. I did the math. I counted every day, every packet I needed. Carl, I I've noticed that you're uh, going for the M&M packet a lot, a lot more as we get closer to Christmas. I think you might have seasonal depression. I don't have seasonal depression, Randy. I have you. <laughs> Why couldn't they have sent me up on here with that chimpanzee? But... A chimpanzee wouldn't have gotten you a present! I don't want a present! Oh, no, 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 no. You're gonna want that one. Is it an eject button? No, no, no. Just open it. I'm not opening come on, it. Come on, come on. It's for you. Hang on. All right, give it to me. I'll oh. open your gift. Ooh. There, are you happy? I... Oh. oh my gosh. M&M's. And a partridge in a pear. Pear. You got me M&M's. Tree. How yes. did you get more peanut M&M's? Oh, I brought my own supply. Turns out they're my favorites too, Carl. But when I saw how much that you, uh, you needed them, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew I had the best perfect Christmas present for you this year, man. Wow. I... Thank you. Yeah. Do you, you want to split this with me? Sure. <gasps> <laughs> oh, ah, look, it's 1201. Oh, it's time to take down the Christmas lights, Carl. Yeah, leave them up for the day. Houston can wait. Really? Yeah. <gasps> Merry Christmas, Randy. Merry Christmas, Carl. <laughs> Dashing through the snow. Randy. And, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Columbia Space Station, this is Houston. Were you able to locate the source of the power surge? Uh, yeah, all clear, Houston. All systems are operational. All right, Dr. Weber. We'll see you back on Earth in the new year. Oh, and Houston. Yes, Columbia? Merry Christmas down there. I love you, Carl. Love you, Randy. And now we once again hear from the Irving sisters singing Stille Nacht, or as you might know it, Silent Night. The Irving sisters. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep. 
And as our evening comes to a close, um, we'll be hearing an old 19th century story written by O. Henry, adapted by Buzz McLaughlin, titled Gift of the Magi. It is Christmas Eve in the year 1900. The streets are filled with men and women hurrying about. The icy wind nips at their noses as they rush about with their final Christmas preparations. Nestled away in one small tenement, tucked inside a warm bed, lie Jim and Della Young. Oh, time to rise and shine, dear Jim. Already? It's Christmas Eve day, Jim. Every moment of it is precious. We can't let it slip by. You're what makes my days precious. And you make my days bright. Now get out of bed. <sighs> What a perfect Christmas Eve. You're so beautiful, Della. <laughs> Stop it. It's true. You have hair fit for a queen, the way it flows over your shoulders. I've always said you're royalty. Get out of bed, sleepyhead. I'm going to fix breakfast. What are you making? Two eggs and the rest of our bacon. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Uh, but, but I really don't have time for breakfast, Stella. If my watch is right, I only have a few minutes. Oh, sit down. You do have time. Your skin and bones as it is. Put your watch away and let's say grace. Let your, your blessings, blessings, almighty God, God descend on this portion, portion of, of your, your bounty, bounty and, on and on us, your unworthy your servants. servants through through Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord. Amen. Is there coffee this morning? No, Jim. We don't... Uh, I... Right. Day before Christmas, and we still can't afford coffee. It's all right, Jim. We're making it work. But for how much longer? My salary's already been reduced, and they're piling on more work. Jim. You're taking a mending to bring in a few more pennies, and it's still not enough. Look at this apartment. We're squeezed into two rooms, and we can't even afford our own furniture. I, I just wish we could have a nicer home. I'm happy here, Jim, truly. Our home is perfect for us right now. And we'll keep praying that things will get better, and they will. Mr. James Dillingham Young. That's what our nameplate says. You'd think Mr. James Dillingham Young could at least afford coffee. Jim, please. We're making it work. And you're a wonderful husband. Well, wonderful or not, my watch is telling me that if I don't hurry, I'll be late for work. Oh, your watch is a sign, Jim. My father's watch. Your father's watch. Remember when he gave it to you? It was his father's, and now it's yours. And maybe someday, well, it's, it's precious, Jim. And you deserve a thousand watches just like it. And God is with us. That watch is a sign that he'll take care of us. He always has. And for now, we hold on to that watch and hope and pray. You're right. You're right, Della. I'm sorry. I just, I'll be joyful today. It's Christmas Eve, and I have you. And I have you. And at least for now, I also have a job. I have to go, Della. Oh, but you've barely touched your breakfast. I was late last week, Della. Let me wrap it up for you, and then I'll walk with you to the office. Oh, look, Jim. They're still here. The combs. The same ones? Aren't they lovely? The jewels and... Oh, my, they must be ivory. And expensive. We'll never be able to afford them, but it's fun to dream, isn't it? Come on now, Della, or I'll be late. Here, the, the office is just up the street from here. Well, look at the bright side, Mr. James Dillingham Young. It's Christmas tomorrow, and we can be with each other all day long. Which makes me the luckiest man in the world. I love you. I'll see you tonight. I love you, too. Bye. <sighs> Dear God, please lift his spirits. He tries so hard. I don't know what else I can do. At least I can try to have a nice Christmas dinner tomorrow for us. Della! Mrs. Young! Della! Hmm? Well, Mrs. Young, I've caught up to you at last. Out shopping for your last-minute gifts? 
Oh, hello, Mrs. Crawford. Yes, yes, I am. Such a mountain of presents every year, isn't it? I suppose all this hustle and bustle is worth it. It is lovely, Mrs. Crawford. By the way, I have more mending for you. I'll drop it off right after the holidays. Say, uh, Boxing Day. That would be lovely. Thank you, Mrs. Crawford. Thank you. I must be off. So much to do to, before tomorrow's big feast. Have a bountiful Christmas, Mrs. Young. The, the same to you, Mrs. Crawford. Here's the grocer. At least I can see what we can afford for our own little Christmas feast. It might not be much of one, but Jim won't mind. Excuse me, sir. What's that, miss? <laughs> Hello. How much is your smallest goose? Ah, that would be 50 cents, ma'am. All dressed and ready for the oven, that one is. I see. How about your smallest chicken? Smallest? That would be 20 cents, but it won't give you much. Our smallest is pretty meager. I know. And your smallest fruitcake? Ten cents, ma'am. All right. Then I'll take this loaf of bread, your smallest chicken, and this little fruitcake. Are you certain, ma'am? Quite certain. Yes, ma'am. Coming right up. Here you are, sir. Thirty-four cents. Thank you, ma'am. And Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas, sir. Now I have to see how much I have left for a present for Jim. I've been trying to save for so long, and I have a bit of money left over from the grocer in my purse. 25 cents, 50 cents, one dollar, one dollar and fifty cents, one dollar and eighty, eighty-seven cents. Jim, oh Jim, what, how can I buy a Christmas present for you with a dollar and eighty-seven cents? Dear God, I want so much for him to have a happy Christmas. And to give him something wonderful, something to cheer him up. He... Oh, Jim. Wait a minute. If... But Jim would never let me do such a thing. But he wouldn't mind. Not, not really. Yes. Yes, that's it. Wait, where's my hat and my coat? Butcher, First Bank, the court. Ah, here it is. Mrs. Safrani, hair articles of all kinds, second floor. This is the place. Hello? Hello, dear. How may I help you? You must be Mrs. Safrani. Will you buy my hair? If it's of good quality, I may. Take off your hat and let me look at it. Of course. I'll let it down. Yes. I see you have hair, indeed. Let me feel the weight of it. Mm. Twenty dollars. All right. Can you give it to me today? Once I have your hair, dear. Sit down right here while I get the scissors. Now, lean back. Yes, ma'am. Hold still, dear. Hatter shop? No. A new hat would look out of place with his clothes. We'll have to wait until we can buy a whole new suit. Oh, Jim, what what can I do? You'll be home soon and I don't have a gift for you yet. I'll know it when I see it. I must. I have to. Please, God, just this one Christmas, help us to celebrate in some fashion. It's been so long since... Oh! Oh! <laughs> Hello, sir. I was passing your shop and saw your window display. Would it be possible for me to see those items? Of course, ma'am. Were you interested in any in particular? The gold watch chain, please. A very fine one. 24 karat gold. Very plain and simple with a pure, classic elegance. Oh, this chain and Jim's watch will be a perfect match. It is perfect. Thank you, God. How much is it? It is expensive, ma'am. Quite expensive. It appears simple, but it is a fine artisan piece. How much does it cost? <clears throat> $21. Thank you. I'll take it. Uh, very well, ma'am. Uh, let me just wrap it up for you. Thank you, God. Jim has always needed a chain for his watch, and now he'll have one. He will never believe it's made of real gold. 
Oh, he will be so happy. Here it is, ma'am. Uh, that will be $21, please. I'll just write out a receipt. Oh, no need. Here you are. Five, fifteen, twenty-one dollars Very good, ma'am. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. Oh, it's late, and I've got to make dinner before Jim comes home. I'll leave his gift right here on the table where he'll see it when he walks in. Oh, but what will Jim think of me now that I've cut my hair? It's so short. I look like a schoolboy. Oh, Jim will say I look like a girl who sings and dances for money. But what could I do? I couldn't let Jim go without a proper Christmas gift. But there he is. Please, God, make him still think I'm pretty. Welcome home, Jim. How was your day? You look cold and exhausted. But it's Christmas now. We can... Why are you looking at me like that with that strange expression? Say something. Jim, dear, don't look at me like that. I had my hair cut off and sold it. I couldn't live through Christmas without giving you a gift. My hair will grow again. Nothing was really lost. It'll come back again, and you don't know what a beautiful gift I got for you. Della, you cut off all your hair. To sell it, Jim. It'll come back soon. It's gone. It's all gone. Sold, Jim. Sold and gone. Oh, Della. My poor, sweet, good Della. I love you so much. Hair or not, it's just... Well, here, open this. Then you know what I felt when I came in. What is it? Open it. Oh, Jim. The combs, the beautiful jeweled combs from the shop window. I, I couldn't stand to go one more Christmas without something that you, that you deserve. You're so good to me, Della. You're so much more than I could ever have deserved. My hair grows back so fast, Jim. It will come back. Oh, oh I, I almost forgot. Here, here on the table is your gift. Here you are. Happy Christmas, Jim. Della. Open it, Jim. Oh, D Della. A beautiful gold chain for your father's watch, Jim. Isn't it perfect? I hunted all over town, and when I saw this, well, isn't it perfect? You have to look at your watch a hundred times a day now. Here, give me your watch, and I can put them together. My good, sweet Della. How do you think I could afford the combs? What do you mean, Jim? You didn't... I sold my father's watch to pay for the combs. Oh, Jim! Uh, let's... Let's put away our gifts and keep them a while. They're much too nice to use just now, and they'll, and they'll keep. Jim. Let's have our supper, and tomorrow we can feast with a beautiful Christmas dinner. <laughs> yes, Jim. <laughs> just, just wait until you see the chicken and the fruitcake. You should have seen the goose the grocer had. It was as big as my arm, and the brides, well, we'll have to get those next year. The Magi, as you know, were wise men who traveled from afar to bring gifts to the newborn Christ child. They gave the first Christmas gifts to Christ himself. Frankincense, gold, myrrh. But these two young people, Jim and Della, are, in the eyes of the world, not wise. They each sold the most valuable thing they owned to honor the most precious thing they loved. Of all who give gifts in this day, these are the wise ones. They are the Magi.
Awesome. Thank you to the Northridge Prep Choir, and thank you to uh, everyone who's performed tonight. We're going to close out the evening um, with the last song, the last lyrics in your program. This is your last chance to sing along. So join along and sing along tonight. Um, this is Come Thou Font. It's an old, old traditional tune, uh, which is all about the meaning of Christmas, uh, and it's a lovely note to end the song on, uh, to end the evening on. I uh, hope everyone has their program in hand. This is your last chance to sing. Come thou fount of every blessing Tune my heart to sing thy praise Streams of mercy never cease Teach me some melodious song Sung by flaming tongues Mount of God's unchanging love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the goal of God, he to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood.